Okay, so what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm actually gonna get rid of this fly there. He's probably been buzzing around my room all day. Uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, mix the colors. So I just want to show you guys this. I taped off the uh, ankle here, and I have to say, surprisingly, this was one of the hardest models I've ever masked up, especially like right here in the front. Man, it was. It was really tough because I had to do it a couple times, and to make sure I didn't accidentally, like you know, lift off the masks and stuff. Oh man, I was sweating about it, but uh, got it done. I think it looks pretty good. I'm quite um, quite happy with it. Um, <clears throat> so now, like I said, I have to mix some RLM colors, and for that, I'm going to turn to Tamiya's 148 scale ME109. And I need this, and this, and there we go. So what's really cool in the instructions here is they give you directions on how to make RLM colors. So we have RLM 71, RLM 02, or 2, RLM 64. So I mixed already the 64. Now I basically used up all the paint and I have enough in here for touch-ups and painting a couple of the little antenna and things like that that need to be blue on the underside which is pretty good and in case anything else you know accidentally peels up I can quickly paint over it but I need the first I need the light green which is RLM02 and luckily these are just 1-1 one -one mixes here so if you're needing RLM colors and you're using Tamiya acrylics, just search online and you can find a bunch of people who post the instructions. There's a couple people who, you know, have the instructions posted there and you can find out whatever color it is you need. So I'm just going to stir this up thoroughly. This one I'm a little worried about. I think it may have broke in the... That's one of the things that my hobby store owner was telling me about, is he, you know, I was asking about getting new paints in, and he doesn't like getting new paints in in the winter, because they um, burst in the, they freeze in transit, and then they kind of blow up. I've had that happen a couple of times, so I'm actually going to take this tape off. I don't need it. There we go. And let's try and mark half. Maybe approximately half. How much am I gonna put in here? Yeah, I think that's about roughly. No, this is a bit too much. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll be about half right there. So, this is going to be the first color that I paint. Oh, I missed. Why do you pour it on the stick, you may be asking? Well, that way it goes straight into the pot. It doesn't have to spill anywhere else. So the next color I need is 49, khaki. This is um, RLM Gray, the XF22, yeah. And I'm thinking should buy another one next time I go out. These are all brand new, so I don't they don't need a terrible amount of stirring. They they're pretty good. So I'm kinda curious to see what this how this color turns out. Because I've seen other modelers, you know, paint with these colors before and they look really good. So I'm pretty excited to get to uh, test these out on my own. So fill it up to that line there. Yeah, I'm not even in. Let me turn this way. 
Yeah, all you're seeing are my hands. There we go. No, there. Alright, so one one mix. Ah <laughs> No way, that's pretty sweet. I'm gonna shake it up like this. Actually I should clean this paint up here. Oh, cool. There you go. It'll show much, much better when I airbrush it on. Sweet. That's awesome. I need some tape. Oh, no, this is the one I want. This is RLMO. Oh, two. What I'm going to do, like, with these bottles, like, you know, with this one, it's a nice thing about acrylics, is I can just use them, and, uh, I can, I can wash out the bottles and reuse them again. So that's, you know, basically what I'm going to do with those. So let's do the last one here. Put a bit of paint on it. At least it's on the outside. But I'd like to just buy a whole bunch of these. Like if I if I go in, into the store and I see this, you know, box of these little bottles, I'm gonna buy them all up again. Just because they're so nice to have and they're just super easy to work with. So about there, about there, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good. So let's pour in the gray again. Probably going to use up all the gray. If not, I'll just pour it in the other pot. It won't matter. Okay. And all of drab, <coughs> excuse me, all of drab, all of drab, all of drab, all of drab, it's a bit drab, it's all of drab. Now, Tamiya's all of drab paint is not one of my favorite colors. It's, I find it to be too dark, but a really nice mix. It's what I did on the um, B17. Uh, the big Memphis Bell Revel one is about a 50-50 mix of khaki and olive drab. Makes a really nice color. Or I can't remember if it's about 50-50 or about three to one. Um, three parts olive drab, one part khaki. Play around with it a bit, and uh, I'm gonna. I have another kind of model coming up where I need olive drab, so I'm gonna mess around with that when I get to that one and figure out how, what the color will be like. So let's do this thing here. I'm 
mostly see olive drab in here right now. I don't see much of gray. Ah, there it goes. Again, that's one of the nice things I love about Tamiya acrylics is they they mix together really well. Like they're like I've had paints like Humbrol is pretty good, but like like uh, testers they don't really like to mix with other colors. But um, Tamiya, it's like yeah, pour like five colors in together and you get a really nice looking looking color paint. So let me just shake this up by hand here. And this is RLM 71, a darker green. And I have to show these paints to my dad later. I have to go and take a visit to him there. He wants to see the Henkel as well. I told him I was building one of the nicest model kits of a Henkel I've ever seen. He's only ever built the Italeri and the Revel, old Revel and the Airfix ones, and he doesn't like them. And he really wants some R nice RLM colors, so... Bam! Look at that. That's still kind of an olive drabby color. I might add a bit of green to... Oh, no! Sveinhunds. I mixed the wrong colors. <laughs> I did. Oh. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't read. I can't read. I really can't. I really, really can't. I wasted all that RLM gray I could have used on another project. I wasted all that olive drab and khaki. Well, you know what? This is kind of funny because I just mentioned about the olive drab. Uh, <laughs> this will be just a unique olive drab. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm supposed to mix these two together. Not not these two. Crap. Okay. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Okay. This has gone on way too long, but... I don't care. This is going to be a separate video. <laughs> Oops. That time I did get on the outside. I can't believe I did that. Well, that's why I bought these brand new bottles, so I didn't have to, you know, really worry about it, about wasting whatever else I had, you know, because I do have olive drab and I do have khaki, but they were being saved for, you know, whatever you need, little bits of painting or tiny airbrushing. I don't have enough in them to do the whole He 111, but. I have enough in case like I you know run out of these guys here. And they're basically through, so I'm just gonna whatever's left in these two bottles, I'm just gonna pour in the other ones. Because there's probably like a millimeter in there. Yeah, this looks about the color I painted the B-17 as well. You know, the, I mentioned that just a couple minutes ago. Um, 
so never mind. You got to see it firsthand. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Actually, I can believe I did that. Because I'm going to go airbrush in a minute. So, a little, feeling a little rushed. So, yeah, you know what? I don't like it. But, you know what? It's probably going to be the same thing I did with the Spitfire. Or I didn't like it, but... What the... Okay. Why does the one I accidentally mixed look better than the one that I was supposed to mix? Okie doke. Yeah, this looks more appropriate than this one. But they both look good. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go and uh, fiddle around with these paints. And I'm going to actually go and airbrush. But I'm not going to show it. Because the one I want to show is masking. Um, but this is a standalone video. I keep forgetting that. Because I showed the E111. So, I'll s thanks for watching, everybody. Um, yeah, this is mixing RLM colors. Who knows, maybe I'll include this in the regular Hankel video. It's been just a mess. I'm going to go wash my hands and clean up my desk here. Oh, well. You live and learn. I've got some cool-looking paints. They look RLM-y, so uh, I'm, I'm probably going to just keep them, because I'm quite, like I said, I'm actually kind of liking the look of this one more than the look of this one. But I should write down its name. So I've painted it and that is the RLM uh, 02 here. And um, I I wasn't too happy between the, the colors. Like the one that I mixed I thought looked better than the one that I um, than, than that was recommended. The one that I accidentally mixed looked a lot nicer. Uh, this guy here. So I began hunting around online, and there is, I've had a couple people recommend um, sites for colors and things like that, and I can't believe I forgot about this website for so long. It's one of the best uh, color reference websites out there, and they're constantly upgrading it and updating it, and uh, it's um, IPMS Sweden. And uh, if you type in, like, whatever your search engine is, like Google search, just search IPMS Sweden uh, color chart, and it'll bring you to this web page, and it has, like, lists of every country during World War II that had aircraft, and then you click on that, like, German, and it has a list of, like, what the colors were from 1939 to 1941, um, to, like, even, even to, like, 1936. It's really, really comprehensive and really well done. And then you click on the picture, and it shows you, um, the, the real color on there. And sometimes it's, like, a square with, like, all four or all three colors in the, in this little color wheel. And, uh, yeah, it gives you the federal standard name for each of these paints. It's really, really cool. Um, so... Uh, check that out. I'll try and leave. I'll try and remember to leave a link to it. If I don't, someone just remind me in a comment, and I'll provide a link to that. It's a fantastic website, and on occasion they have um, like reference colors, but their color chart, like they they have the colors, but they don't quite have the match to the color, uh, if that makes sense. So like, like I can find like uh, whatever green I need, uh, but they won't have what it is in Tamiya colors or how to mix it in Tamiya colors. So that's kind of the only drawback to it. You kind of have to do a little bit more research, but it's the perfect place to, you know, get going on, on the basics. And I'm definitely going to be using it for more and more future projects. And I actually sent it to my dad and he got really excited about it. So here's the um, RLM02. I really like it. I think it looks fantastic. And so for this part, uh, I did take a look, like I said, I was on that website. And this one that I accidentally mixed here is basically the color I need. So I'm going to use it instead. Um, and I 
This is a little paint chart I did uh, for the uh, 109 Cyber Hobby one. I made this little chart. This is the brown I used, and then I was testing to see which green to use on the on the plane. So I just did a couple little test swatches there. And this is the one that I mixed, and it definitely looks to be the part. So uh, splinter camouflage is kind of the easiest to to mask, um, you know, as far as all the other uh, camouflage schemes go. Um, but who knows? You might need a little bit of a head start and what to do. And so we're gonna grab our instructions here, and I'm gonna just do kind of this section of the wing right here, just to get you guys started. And like I said, it's pretty simple. You just need some good tape. I'm going to use this uh, Tamiya tape and some of that Kamoi tape. And uh, now this is something I've seen several times in uh, issues of Fine Scale Modeler, and it always makes me laugh. And because I've done it myself, is when you start taping the wrong side. Like you're like, okay, I have to mask this little square here. So you start masking off this, and then you go, oh no, wait. That's the part I'm supposed to paint. I'm supposed to mask off this part. You know, it always happens um, to the best of us. So keep in mind when you're doing that and try and keep a heads up of that so you don't feel too bad when you have to go back and redo a bunch because it, it sucks. But uh, what are you going to do? So I have to have kind of long strips of tape here. And I'm using 6mm masking tape because it's pretty thin and then I can add bigger strips of tape onto it later. So, like I said, this will be kind of easy. So this will just be the case. Big block here, one, two squares there, and it goes right down past that piece there. So that'll be... Let me just flip this around there. And I always like to flip the directions in the way that I'm, I'm putting the tape on the model or masking it, just in case. So this will fit about, oh, one more. Ah, stuck already. There. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So I need to wrap it around because there's a green border here and I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do with this part a little tab there I'm gonna trim that because it's nice to save these little pieces for when you're doing other you know splinter bits and you might need it for whatever like right now I could use this piece I think um, because of the next one and a lot of people, what they like to do, like other modelers, they like to make these in like 70 second scale, so they have them exact. But I'm okay with doing it this way. I don't find too much trouble in it, personally. If that's what you want to do, by all means, go ahead. It's whatever, you know, works easiest for you. Okay, we got the cap right here. Back to there. Da, 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 da. Ah, right. Okay, so that goes to here. Flip it around. And there you go. Like I said, it's pretty well calculated. You shouldn't have too much of a hassle with it. And then this goes straight down to there. Okay. That we can do. And I'm going to actually trim these tags straight. So I have these nice straight edges. I don't have to worry about the little, you know, jagged lines of the whatever teeth on the tape dispenser. Ah. I'm actually going to pick this one up here. Okay. Actually, not going to do that yet. 
ah, shoot, I thought I had it. When you're, when you're taking off tape, peel it against itself, like this. Don't lift it up like that. Then you run the risk of uh, removing the paint. There we go. Ah. Okay. I hope I got this one this time. No, I didn't. Darn it. Okay, I'm gonna pause this and then when I get I'm having trouble aligning this up, so I'll be back when I get that. Okay, so I did get it down, but this is what I wanted to show is, you know, you don't put it all the way down because we have this flap to deal with. So I'm just going to press inside of here and then press the rest of the tape down. So now it's filled in there. So that's basically all you need to know for, you know, masking splinter camouflage. And, you know, now I can go in with the thicker tape and tape all this section up and do the rest of this, which isn't going to be that much work. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really fun kind of camouflage to, you know, go by, and, uh, when you're doing pieces like, uh, like this right here, where it's really pointy, you just need something nice and flat, and I don't recommend ever using your cutting board, because there's lots of dirt and stuff on them, but a nice piece of glass like that, and you just, to make a, uh, straight line, just show you, get rid of this bit of tape here, this is from the wings yesterday, and this is a template for the uh, tulip on the uh, Tuskegee P51s, so I don't have to ever retrace that thing, because that, that took forever to do, so anyways, okay, so, get yourself a ruler, you got your piece of tape down, this is how we're going to make a nice point. Line up each corner like that. So you go from this corner here to the top corner here on the left to the bottom corner on the right. There you have an oi. Uh, there you have an oi. Yeah. There you have a pointed arrow. So, hope that helps. And uh, like I said, I'm going to go mask the rest of this thing off. And unless I run into a problem with it, uh, you should see some airbrushing. I'm pretty excited to uh, test out this color. I think it'll look really great. And uh, yeah, it's just happy accident. And like I said, it seems to look a lot better than all the other ones that they're recommending. So getting excited to uh, to do that but for now it's going to be a lot of nerve-wracking taping and figuring out and unfiguring out and trying not to lift up the paint which is always fun all right so the next thing you see will be airbrushing oops I forgot one bit there I gotta clean that up anyways I thought I'd just show this real quick this is the final taping of the uh, P111 here and it was quite a bit of work but it's I think it's quite worth it in the end I'm very very pleased that I got these um, nice triangle edges here on the fuselage and I'm just gonna because that's gonna bug me I gotta get that one little spot there on the tail derp de derp 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 There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to actually record this time airbrushing. So, I didn't do that for the last part. Um, the only tough one to mask over kind of was this one right here. Because there's one of these, I don't know if you can call them, it's a raised bump there. But, uh, yeah, as far as the rest of it goes, it was pretty well. I got my paint. It's all pre-mixed and set to go cleaned up my airbrush last night so that's you know that's also set 
And, uh, yeah, I'm just looking really forward to seeing this in action. And, uh, seeing what this color looks like. I also need this. Because, there we go. That's the, um, bubble top here for the, the top gunner here. So, this has been painted RLM gray. And now it gets to be painted RLM imaginary green. I have yet to... I'm going to look on the website, that um, color chart, and just after, like after this is painted on here, I'm going to see kind of what color this is like approximate to. See if it matches anything, because I'd like to use it again. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to go and airbrush this, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I'm terribly excited to see the end result on this guy.